I travel on planes a lot. About 32 weeks a year, I'm traveling around the globe. And so I often sit next to people. And you know, 20 years ago, you'd sit down next to the person, you go, hi, and they go, hi. And then you just start having a conversation. Who knows that doesn't happen anymore? Half the time, people have got AirPods in and you go, hi, and they don't give you anything. You think, rude person. Then you see them walk out and, oh, they couldn't hear me. But even if they don't, they don't talk to you. You go to the person and say, hi. And they go, hi. But then it gets worse. If your occupation is, hi, I'm a pastor. I'm a minister of the gospel. Here, you all go, wow, that's awesome. On a plane where they don't know you, they go, whoa, weirdo. And they sort of, if they didn't have AirPods in, they've got them in now. They've got magazines in front of them. They've got, but if I say to them, I'm the leader of a not-for-profit, they go, wow, that's incredible. It's like, well, that's the same thing. But the whole point is how you speak determines whether people want to listen. I'm a lover of Jesus. People go, there's a weird guy. But you know, I start talking to them about what we do with young people and how we influence governments. And then the last thing I say is, oh, we got the largest church in Australia. And they go, wow, I'd love to come to your church. I'm like, I bet you if I told that first, you wouldn't love to come to my church. Do you see, the Bible is clear that we're supposed to lift our lamp as high as we can. And sometimes we present the gospel and it's overt. We've got to tell people about Jesus. If you're here and you don't know Him, we're going to give you an opportunity today to come to know Him. But you know, there's some forums in life where we can't do that anymore. And so we've got to be careful that we understand our place. But nevertheless, we light the lamp and we lift it up. Do you want to know Jesus? We light the lamp each week and we lift it up. Do you want to know Jesus? We go to our small group. You light it. Do you want to know Jesus? We go into our workplace and at the right moment, do you want to know Jesus? But it's up and it's down. And that's what we've done as a church for many years. But I believe God's wanting us to go to a higher level. But I want to show you today what we do in country so you understand we believe in presenting the gospel. Let's see this video. In 2015, God spoke to us about playing a part in discipling the nation of Papua New Guinea. He gave us a word, believe. And with that word, we walked into a country we had never been to before. But as God went before us, doors flung wide open in every sphere and we encountered divine favour and such incredible influence. This August, we brought almost 300 people to PNG to impact the spheres of leadership, education, business, health, and the church. We sent teams to three different regions. In Port Moresby, the nation's capital, we ran regional rallies and saw over 5,000 people attend and witnessed 1,500 decisions for Christ. In the region of Ley, over 20,000 people came out to our rallies and over 3,000 people were led to Christ. In Kimbay, we saw 25,000 people attend across three nights with 8,000 making decisions for Christ. Many were healed and delivered and set free. Throughout those two weeks, our teams also went to primary schools, secondary schools, prisons, hospitals, and halfway houses, carrying the love of Jesus and the redemptive power of the gospel. Our primary schools team went into 45 schools and were able to speak to 48,600 children. Our teams also visited 28 high schools and ran our program with about 25,000 students. The response to the message was also overwhelming as young people made a stand to change the future of a generation, making a commitment to change the way they spoke to and treated one another. In each region, we visited the prison there and saw almost every prisoner give their life to Jesus. The trip finished with the night celebrations in the National Stadium, where we saw over 200,000 people attend and over 110,000 respond to the message of the gospel. Thousands healed and miracles as we stood with the people of Papua New Guinea to lift up the name of Jesus and declare a new chapter for the nation. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been touched by the power of God. Every missionary has returned with a testimony, a story to tell of lives changed. We believe that a nation is turning to Jesus. We believe it will 
be saved. So the truth is that I believe in presenting the gospel. I believe in making sure that we are overt in what we say. But my question is, where's your light today? Because you see, since we made the decision and God spoke to us to go to the South Pacific, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Tonga, we've seen over 388,000 decisions for Christ. But not because we're great, he's great in us. But he's great in you as well. And it's not about whether I'm going to do something great or you're going to do something great. It's him doing something great in us. And each one of you has a purpose and he wants to use you. So if we're going to position ourselves to get our light in the right place, then we've got to change our thinking. I wrote a book called Think Like a King. Well, you know, Why did I call it that? Because we need to understand who we work for. His name is Jesus. His name is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the risen one. And therefore, that means that we are actually His sons and daughters. That means we are heir. We are heirs to His throne. We are royalty. Ooh, turn to the person next to you and say, you are royalty. You see, if you get a revelation of who you are, then suddenly you don't get caught up on what you can't do. You get caught up on what He can do through you. You are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. That means that you're a king, you're a queen. Why, why, why would I call a book Think Like a King? Because kings are different to emperors. We live in a society right now where most people around us are like emperors. It's all competition. It's all take out another guy so that we can be better. But actually, what you've got to understand is that's how emperors think. They bring bloodshed. They kill off other people. But in the kingdom, we understand that I can be sitting next to a king. I can be sitting next to a queen. And each one of us has a purpose. That means each one of us has a patch. Each one of us has a place that God has put aside for us. But kings don't make themselves. Kings don't create something. They're born into it. So when you're born again, you're born into a kingdom. And you need to understand that you have a reign, you have a rule, you have an ability, you have a purpose. Therefore, whether you're acting, sorry, whether you're ruling as a king or you're being prepared to become the king, Nevertheless, you're a king. You know, when a king is born, when they're about 12 months old, they start to teach them how to walk correctly, how to treat people correctly, how their elocution to speak correctly. And you know that the latest king of England, for example, spent over 70 years waiting to become the king. Some of you get frustrated because you can't get a job in a week. Some of you go, but I I, I think God's got this for me and I'm still waiting. No, no, you're not waiting like it's not going to happen. You're just getting ready, getting ready, getting ready because God has put a purpose on your life and you are a king. So some of you have got to change your thinking. So let's shift for a moment here. You're going to lift the light. You are the light of the world. We're going to do it at church. I'm going to do it every time I open my mouth to preach the gospel. I'm going to lift the light, but then I put it down, I turn it off, then I light it again, then I put it up. But there must be a better way where we can lift our light and not only do we not we leave it, but it actually grows and it increases. We've got to change our thinking. We've got to recognise that each one of us is purpose to do great for God. And we're born with this royalty in our lives. Our lives aren't coincidence. Our lives aren't by chance. Because I hear stories of people who were born seemingly on the wrong side of the tracks. I hear people who were born on the right side of the tracks. But it's not based on your circumstances. It's based on who you are related to. King of kings. Kings, queens. You are the light. You are the light. He wants to use you. And yes, he wants you to present the gospel overt. But he also wants you to understand that he hasn't placed you where you are by coincidence or by chance. You know, when I first went to Papua New Guinea, I I went there and I wrote a letter because we decided God was calling us to disciple nations. Sounds so cool. 
But you know, when you're responsible for doing that as the International Emissions Director of Planet Shakers, I wrote to the Prime Minister of that country, a country of 17 million people, and I wrote to him and I said, we'd like to come and talk to you about how we can partner to help your nation get better. When, you, when I hear that, I go, wow, that is crazy. Imagine writing to a leader of a nation to say, no, we're going to come and you need our help. So I actually didn't think he was going to respond. But I felt like I've done my job. This is what God's telling us. Two weeks later, to my amazement, he responds. So we take four business people and myself and we go to meet the prime minister of this country. When I arrive, there's a vote of no confidence in Parliament, which simply means that there's huge political unrest in the country. And the Prime Minister's office rings when I land and says, we can't meet you. I'm like, what? We flew all this way, paid all this money? But you know what we're like as Christians? That's how we're thinking on the inside. On the outside, I said to his secretary, oh, no, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I wanted to punch it. No, no, thank you. Thank you. And, and so... Because who knows that many of the plans, we have plans, but the Lord's purpose prevails. His purpose goes above what our plan is. So stop looking at your plan saying, it's not working. Keep looking to him. He is the light. He's going to work through you. You become his light on the earth. So they ring me back a few hours later and say, look, we're going to get one of the senior politicians to meet you. He's the finance minister. He's like, like sixth in line. You know, when you're going to see the leader and now you're going to see the sixth in line, it's like, couldn't you even give me the second? And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. Yes, we'll meet him. We go to meet him and he, he walks in and he walks in like this. You've got 15 minutes. I'm like, buddy, 15 minutes? I tell you, I'll give you 15 minutes. I've paid all this money to be here. And, and I went, thank you very much. Thank you very much. But internally, I'm just, nah. We sit down at the table. One hour and 45 minutes later, I'm still talking to this guy. He was the education minister then, had formed before he was the finance minister, had great influence in the nation, and he talked to me about, you guys could help us with education in this nation. We started to talk and we started... Anyway, he wasn't the prime minister yet. You're not living in your purpose yet. But God has a purpose. And in your heart, you know, but don't get caught up in what you're doing. Get caught up in who he is and what he's spoken over your life. And James and I would have dinner every time I'd go to the country, twice a year. And we connect and we became great friends until one day I receive a text from James. James says to me, Neil, don't tell anybody, but I'm about to go to the governor's office to be sworn in as the new prime minister of the country. And because I'd built relationship with him for four years, it's not like he's the PM and I'm trying to get something out of him. We're just friends now. So in 2019, he became the Prime Minister. And then if we look on the screen, have we got photos? Sorry, you guys are going, which photos? If they can find them, there's me praying. Oh, this. In, in, last year, we had some meetings in the country. And this is James Maripay, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. Now we're in 2023 but it was 2015 when I thought I was meeting the sixth in office. Yeah. Ah, but if you stick with God, yeah. he knows what he's got planned for you. It wasn't a mistake that I didn't meet the former prime minister because God had a plan. And in front of a large crowd, we prayed together for the nation of Papua New Guinea. He'd been voted back in for four more years and he just attended our event. This was a, a small event that we had with about 30,000 and he attended and, and he said to me, is this my inauguration? He said, we don't have that in our country and I've never spoken to such a large crowd of people. And for 10 minutes he spoke to the people and he talked about how God was going to use him. The next night he took our whole team, 100 people out to dinner at a buffet and he talked, which I didn't know, how his grandfather was one of the founding fathers of Christianity in the country that we were in. You see, God has a plan even in your family. God has a plan in your school. God has a plan in your purpose. But, but you need to understand that you are the light. He wants to use you. He wants you to change your thinking. Think like kings. Rise above the way you feel and step into what He has for you. 
So if I'm not a king right now, but I was born a king, I'm not a queen right now, but I was born a queen, then what's going on? My life is about getting ready for my moment. It's coming. He wants to use you. He wants to position you. He wants you to shine. Matthew 5 verse 15 and 16 says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. They lift it up. Are you lifting your light up? And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your godly deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Our purpose, our primary purpose is connected. All of us are supposed to, through our light, through our purpose, through our influence, bring glory to the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus over LA. Lift up the name of Jesus over California. Some people say to me, California is the most ungodly state in America now. Ah, persecution's a great time to rise up and become who God has purposed you to be. Not to get consumed with what we don't have, but be consumed with who we know. Therefore, lift up the name of Jesus. Bring glory to His name. John 17 and verse 22 says, I'm given the glory. You're given the glory. You're given the glory of God. You're given the light. You are the light of God by Jesus. What? To manifest His glory on the earth. Do you know what the word glorify means? The synonym of the word glorify is to excel. So in other words, the best way that you can bring glory to God is become the best in your field. Become the best barista, become the best actor, become the best accountant, become the best parent. We live in a crazy world. Now, if anybody here is related to them, I'm sorry. But you obviously know the Kardashians. The Kardashians are known for doing nothing. And they make a lot of money out of doing nothing. We just watch them, observe, and, and it's cool. And I'm not bagging them, but I'm just saying... Why is it that we talk to them about things like, how do you build a successful marriage? I was watching a show the other day. One of the family members, I think she's had 19 marriages. No, no, she hasn't, but you know, she's had a few. But the point is because they've become the most excellent in the television industry that people want to know. So let's stop complaining as the church. Let's stop complaining about politicians. Let's stop complaining about sports people. Let's become those people. Let's become the most excellent in our field. Let's rise in our purpose. So why? We bring glory. We bring light to the name of Jesus on the earth. You see, we are the church of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we got to rise and become who His purpose does to be. So how do we become more effective? Let's not reach down and lift the light and put it up. We present the gospel, eat the light and put it up and present the gospel, reach down and put it up. Let's put it on a lampstand and let's see how we can stand back and it keeps shining, keeps shining and it gets more because we become the most excellent. So it's over, present the gospels. But as Francis of Assisi famously said, present the gospel and if you must use words, so be it. In other words, we've got to be over it. But we've got to be covert. Oh, who's the best sports person in the nation? Are they in this room today? I believe they could be. Who's the best student in this room? I believe they could be. Because when they stand on that stage and they get asked a question, they represent our God. And then people don't look at them and go, what? You're a Christian. They go, hey, I want to become a Christian if he's a Christian. Come on, church. It's time for us to be most excellent in what we do. Overt and covert, it's not either or. But in a world that currently says they hate the church, then let's go on the quiet. Let's go on the offensive. Let's become the best so that our loud voices can be heard through who we are rather than what we say. Excellence in everything that we do. Now we're going to show another video, and it's the first video you should, which was awesome. But we started a school. Because the education minister who became the finance minister, who's now my friend, James Maripay, the PM, said to us, you need to create a values-based leadership curriculum. So I started a thing called the Believe Institute. Now, if you've ever seen that, that movie with Robin Williams and he creates the Gesundheit Institute, well, I thought that's a cool name, so I'm going to call it the Believe Institute. 
What do I know about education? I don't tell anybody, but I didn't even pass high school. Now I am the leader of the most fastest growing education institution in the whole South Pacific. <laughs> I'm the CEO. How funny is God? We ran a pilot, two years. Whew, education is slow, two years. But guess what? Last week, Fiji made it a compulsory education, do our leadership course one hour a week in every school in the nation. Guess what? I met with the First Lady of Kenya in November last year, at the beginning of next year. She wants to make it compulsory for all 10.8 million of high school students to, be, to do the course. Guess what? PNG has already started and it's already compulsory and there's over 2 million students every week that are going to do the course. And guess what? It's not the Bible. Don't tell anybody. It is. We just don't put scripture in verse. Oh, is that wrong? Well, the Bible didn't say it will return, it won't return void if you put scripture in verse. You just put it. And guess what? Muslim countries, guess what? Hindu countries, they won our education program. It's called covert in what we do. But we have some major challenges about identity. It's not about sexuality. It's not about sexuality. The issues that we're facing right now, it's not about gender fluidity. It's about identity. People don't know who they are. But if they know our God, they'll discover who they are. We don't need to talk to the issue. We need to introduce them to our Jesus. So we got these kids. And just listen to what they say. Just by the way, this school that we did went from being in the middle of the nation with results to the top of the nation in results in the two years we ran the course. And the, the, the Muslim principal, <laughs> he says to the international women's community on International Women's Day, what has singularly changed in my school is what the Believe Institute through their leadership course has brought. If we must use words, so be it. Let's watch the video, the testimonies of the students that did the course. My name is Shane. I attend Paradise College. I am currently doing grade 11 or year 11, and I've been in the Believe Institute for two years now. The thing I like about Believe Institute is that it molds future leaders. The most important lesson that I've learned was about leadership. Leadership is not about commending people around. Leadership is about helping others, serving them, and putting their needs and wants first before yours. And one thing I want to change in Papua New Guinea as a future leader for this great country is that I want to change the mindset, make it become a growth mindset. I want us, as future leaders, to say that we can make things happen. My favorite part of Believe Institute is getting people to step out of their comfort zone. You get them to step out of the box, do more. The most important lesson I would say it was women in leadership. Women are not born leaders in our mentality. So it, it would be great to see a women prime minister. My favorite part of Believe Institute is the teaching of students. They teach students how to be a better leader and also how to be a better student and a person. I've progressed from being a shy student into like more confident. I could be open to people, like sometimes, not all the time, but I'm still improving. The greatest lesson that the Believe Institute has taught me is about women in leadership. When I was younger, influenced by my cultural values, I used to think that women were not supposed to be in power. And after the Believe Institute, I now believe that all women and men are equal. I'd like to see more women in our government. Right now, there's been a lot of men and less women, and I believe that with more women in power, our country could change. I love that it encourages people to show their leadership skills, and for the future of PNG, I would like to see future leaders, not only leaders that are like adults, but also teenagers that could lift up other people, helping them to become leaders as well. So in that nation, the biggest issue is misogyny. Men do not allow limit. In fact, the the, the, the average young girl under the age of 18 is beaten by either her brother or her father uh, repeatedly for at least 10 years of her life. So when you hear those statements, it's only ever been seven women in any form of politics in the nation. But then a young boy who admits, I don't even think women are supposed to be involved, now he's one of the student leaders of one of the biggest schools in the nation. 
We didn't tell them women or men. We just said God has a purpose for your life. We used scripture and we didn't put scripture in verse, but we used the words. And it will not return void when you present the gospel. You see, you need to understand that God wants you to be overt and covert, but he wants you to be the light. He wants you to be the most successful in what it is that you're called to do. And we as the church come together, we rally, we rally. And then we go out into the marketplace every day and we represent our Jesus. We bring glory to His name, understanding that we are royalty and therefore we're kings, we're queens, we're people that arise in greatness and do great things for Him. And we will take back what the enemy has tried to steal. Ah, fearless church will rise and do what only it can do here in LA. A city on a hill. A city on a hill. A city on a hill can, can, cannot be hidden. We need to understand that God is rallying us. God is growing us because He wants you to be the light. You to be the light. And as your thinking changes, suddenly it's not just a word picture that Jesus speaks of. It's a community of believers that truly win, that they believe that they can win a city. The church is a haven for those who know God. But we've got to understand the church is far much more than that. It should be a place of hope for those that don't yet know God. People are going to be attracted to this place. But remember, you are this place, not these walls. And I want them to be attracted to you because you're the most excellent. If you're a scientist and you don't have letters behind your name, nobody believes you. Nobody listens to you. So you might need to go and get a doctorate so that you can be valid in that world. But you know what? At the right moment, people are going to go, he's a scientist, but he's different. There's nothing worse than a barista that gives you a coffee and it's like slams it on the table. Do you know when they're nice and they make it with a great picture and it's perfect and, and they're like, I hope you enjoy it, sir. You go in week in, week out and at some point you're going to go, you're always so up, what is it? Ah, you are the light. You are the light. A city on a hill can not be hidden. I want you to stand to your feet all around the room. Musicians can come. 1962, an American astronaut by the name of John Glenn was the first man to circumnavigate in the spacecraft friendship, the Earth. But one of the experiments that NASA decided to do was to see if light could be seen singularly from the orbit And so they found the most isolated city on earth. It's called Perth, West Australia, where I grew up. Perth, West Australia is 2,200 miles from any other city. So they wanted to see if in isolation from a long way away, they could see light suddenly come on. Oh, I wanna remind you of something. You might feel isolated, but you know what? light shines brighter in isolated places. You might feel like you're alone in that school, but light shines brighter when somebody stands out. You're in an industry that people say, you can't be like that. It's just with a girl who's got 26 million followers on China's version of Instagram in a country that doesn't believe in Jesus every concert she sings two full worship songs and the government get her to do all their promotion see the light sometimes shines brighter in isolation 1962 believe it or not I wasn't born so I hear about this story Perth is now called the city of lights because at 11pm they sanctioned the whole city to turn on their lights street lights school lights building lights homes get your flashlight out every light we can get 11 o'clock there was a countdown everybody turned it on you hear John Glenn in NASA on radio from the orbit wow 
It's incredible. I can see it. At the moment, they turned it on. But guess what? I wasn't there. I wasn't born. Until 1996, John Glenn decided to do it again. And I'm like, I'm in. So you can come to church every week and attend, tick the box. I go to church. Or you can go, I'm in. Not in just to attend or praise and worship. That's what we do. It stirs us. But it motivates us to go week in, week out into dark places. We are the light. So I thought, I- I'm in. But you know, I'm a man and why waste time just putting on a light? I thought I may as well do two things at once because all girls know that men can multitask better than women, right? Wow, that went down like a lead balloon. More girls here than boys, obviously. My wife always says, can you do two things at once? Sheesh. So I fired up our jacuzzi at home, outdoors. Fired at some friends and we got flashlights. And at 11 o'clock, we started to count down, 10 to 11, 10, 9. And we turned on our flashlights, turned on the house lights and all the street lights came on. And John Glenn, the next day in the news, is like, it was more spectacular than I could ever remember. The growth was incredible of the city. The, the city had grown by nine times since 1962, 36 years. But I remember having this thought just for a moment. I wonder if I really participated because I just used my flashlight. But imagine if we allowed ourselves to think my light doesn't count. Because then the building could say, it doesn't matter. Street could say, it doesn't matter. My house, don't turn the lights on. And if everybody just said, mine doesn't really matter, then John Glenn would have never seen anything. But the unique purpose of the church is we stand together. Oh, you're isolated tomorrow. You're in an industry that I don't understand. You're in a school that I've never been to and never will. You're in a family that I don't get. But if you will have the courage to say, I am the light. Suddenly, in the east of LA, a light goes on. In the west of LA, a light goes on. In the city of LA, a light goes on. And we become a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. So no longer say, how can I make a difference? Who am I? Understand God has given you a unique purpose. You are royalty. Lift it up, put it, put it back there. Lift it. It's time for us to think differently and have our light on all the time as high as we possibly can so that we can start to light and win cities for the purposes of Jesus. I'm stupid enough to believe that Papua New Guinea one day will be saved. I'm stupid enough to believe that Melbourne, Australia, where Planet Shakers churches will one day be saved. I just get a sense that there may be some people who are stupid enough to believe that LA can be saved. We could win a city. We could change a nation. We could see a change to the earth. But it starts one little flashlight. Not thinking it's insignificant but recognising you are the light. You are the light. You are the light. Close your eyes. Maybe you've lost your confidence. Maybe you've said that statement, who am I, what can I do? If you only knew, Pastor Neil, what I've done. If you only knew what I'd done. Not always positive. But I want to remind you today, it's not about what I've done or you've done, it's about what He's done for us. So therefore, we've got to recognise that He's the ultimate light. And if you say yes, He uses you as a reflector to touch the whole earth. But maybe you've lost your confidence. Maybe you've done something wrong. Maybe the enemy is plaguing your head. Maybe you're saying, how am I not going to lose my faith in this industry? and all those things that the enemy does and it's holding you back. And you say, God, give me fresh confidence today. 
to stand for You. Give me fresh confidence to burn my light for You. Give me fresh confidence to be fearless in this dark place. Well, every eye is closed. I don't care whether it's one or it's all of you. You say, would you pray for me? It could be the smallest thing, could be the biggest thing. But you say, I want my confidence. I want a new level of authority. I want to get back to the place that I recognise I'm royalty. Then would you allow me to pray for you? And then we're going to pray for our city and we're going to believe something's going to shift in the atmosphere. But if that's you and you say, please pray for me, I want you, not in a scared way, but in a direct way, lift both hands in the air and say, I want fresh confidence. God, I want to be used by you. God, I want to be positioned by you. Don't care about the person next to you. This isn't the moment for that. Don't worry about what people think. Something's about to shift in your atmosphere. Something's about to shift around your life. Excellence is going to come to you. Some of you are going to hear from God that you've got to step up in the area that you're involved. Some of you have got to put in more time, more energy. Some of you have got to, got to, got to rise to be the best in your field. But right now, you just got to get your confidence. God, I pray and I breathe confidence into people's spirits. I believe, Lord, in this place right now, something is being established that will be established for many years to come. Lord, this is a church that, that Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Christy, Christy held on and held on and held on and held on. And there was dark, dark days and there was moments where, is this what we're really supposed to do? But they stayed in central LA because they said, we're going to win this city. God, we're going to do something now. There's an army of believers that are rising with them. And I pray that they would get a fresh confidence in this room. They would step to a new level. God, I pray where we talk of 380,000 saved in the South Pacific, do it again right here in LA. Do it again through the people of this church, covert or overt. God, we pray that You would start to stir them right now. Now keep your hands raised. God, I declare royalty over each one of them. Kings and queens would rise up, not because I say so, but because when you died that death, whew, broken body, shed blood, it wasn't just to save our souls, it was to bring us into your family. We are now sons and daughters, kings and queens. We have a territory, we have a patch, we have a unique purpose. So God, I pray right now, make it clear to people. Whew, Give them an understanding that you've given them a realm of opportunity. You've given them a realm of responsibility. You've given them a capacity. Oh God, I pray right now that they would start to rise in whose they are, which family they belong to. Lord, not their natural family. Lord, their God-given purpose and destiny. And I pray in this room right now, something would shift across people's hearts and lives. And they would step into who their purpose to be. Now we're going to change it for a moment. I want you to take one person in your workplace, in your family, in your setting. And I want you to dare to believe for them. Because you know that thought you had of that person? That wasn't coincidence. You were driving down the road. You're going to leave here today and you're going to get a thought of a person you should speak with. Because the way that the light grows. It's one light touches a dark place and another light goes on. Another light touches another dark place, another light. And before long, the sequence of those lights start to connect together. Right now, there might be some distance between some lights, but whew, if you'll just reach one, in this room, we could suddenly see 500 or 1,000. And then those 500 or 1,000 could see one more light and then it's 2,000 and then it's 10,000, then it's 100,000. It doesn't happen just because we hold one meeting one day. It happens because people get the revelation. I feel isolated, but I'm lighting my light. I'm turning my flashlight on. I'm making a decision to become a follower of Jesus. So right now I want you to get one person's name. Not hundreds, one person. It could be a mum. Could be a dad, could be a friend at work, could be a former girlfriend, boyfriend. I, I don't know, it could be a work colleague. But you don't have to think about it because God's already been speaking to you. Nothing happens by chance. When you understand purpose, you just step into it. So know that person. And I want you, I'm going to pray that we would start to see a revival, we would start to see growth, that we would start to see 
And the way it's going to happen is your friend that you're speaking out their name in this environment right now is going to have their light switched on. They're going to come to Christ. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. If we do it all together, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So God, right now I pray for each and every person right across this environment. I pray for their friend, for their family member, the person that they're getting in their heart. I want you just to start saying that name out loud, declaring that they are saved, that they come to know Christ, that you get an opportunity to know them, that they get an opportunity to know Jesus. So Lord, right now I pray with them and where two or three stand in your name, it is done. So God, we stand believing for a whole harvest of souls to come to you. In Jesus' name, it is done, it is done, it is done. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. I, I wasn't gonna do this, are we okay for time? Just one more minute. One more minute. She wouldn't tell me if I wasn't. She's looking at me, we're okay, we're okay. I, I don't know where I put my phone. Where did I put my phone? Somebody stole my phone. Wow, come on, man. That's... Oh, you told me you were doing okay, but you stole my phone. Only joking. I want to do this because I noticed you turned all the lights out. Cool, well done, everybody. You turned all the, the neon off. It's in the first service, didn't work very well. But here's what we're going to do. I want you all to grab your phone. Don't look at it. Just grab it. Don't look at it. Because if you look at it, you've probably got three emails, two texts, and you'll get lost in phone land like this. Just don't look at it for a moment. But for those that are technologically challenged, probably everybody over the age of 40, you don't know how to turn your light on. Just start thinking, don't turn it on yet. Don't turn it on, but just start thinking, how do I get that? If you've got an iPhone, you just pull it down and there it is, oh, there it is. But that'll still take some people about 10 minutes to get it, so just take your time. Other people, don't turn it on. And when I say turn it on, don't put your light out like this. <sighs> put your light again so we can't see it, okay? But I'm gonna tell you in a moment, if John Glenn can get a whole city to turn their lights on at the same time, I want to leave you with the picture. And in a moment, I'm going to get the team to drop the lights. We're going to have our lights. And when I say one, two, three, your light's going to be on. I want you just to turn around. So just have your phone ready. You can turn your light on now, but put it like this. So I'm going to show you so that you can't get it wrong. See that little light? Like this. Now put it against your chest so we can't see your light. That's it. Nobody can see your light. Now, can we lose all the lights? Even the, st that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, there's still some light there. Can we lose that light? Or is that an emergency light? Nobody knows. Woo. It's, it's getting mystical. It's going, woo, woo, woo. Is that possible or not? I've got nobody giving me any indication. No, we don't think it is. Okay, well, let's focus our attention. You guys can all see each other. But when it's dark, it's even better. Now again, like a little kid, I love it when it's dark, it's naughty. But basically on the count of three, what we're going to do, and particularly focus on these people which we can't see over there, but and those people over there, but what we're going to do is we're going to lift it up. We're going to do, and here's what I want you to get. Don't do it yet, don't do it yet. Don't Keep your phone down, keep your phone down. Gee, it's hard to keep a whole crowd together. When I sat in my jacuzzi and I put up my light, I could have easily thought my flashlight has no purpose. But see, in a dark place, even the smallest of light, watch what it does. One, two, three, turn around. Now turn to each other, turn around like this. Suddenly what was dark is light. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. City on a hill cannot be hidden. Come on, let's put our phones down. Let's lift our hands. Let's just worship Jesus one more time. Fearless Online Church. Man, what an amazing day so far. Right now is an opportunity for us to give back. We've been receiving so much. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed from what's going on in this stream and what God is doing in this church. Proverbs 19:17 says this, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he, the Lord, will repay him for his deeds. This church 
is all about reaching the needs of our city and cities worldwide. In fact, last year alone, we were able to pass out 2.2 million pounds of food. Come on, somebody, that's a lot of food. We, we gave out food and we were able to pray for every single person. We also washed their cars, pretty much the modern day uh, version of washing someone's feet. Man, what an awesome experience that we've got to have through generous givers just like you. You may not be able to be here on ground zero level, feeding people, clothing people, loving on people, but you sure can be a part of this by giving your finances and lending in a sense to the Lord. And we know that you can't outgive God. I've found over 41 years of life that no matter how much I give to the Lord, He always gives back. He gives back so much more, no matter how much I release. I really believe that the spirit of generosity is alive in our generation. We need to meet people's physical needs so they'll open their heart so God can meet their spiritual need. Would you help us do that? We wanna give out more clothing. We wanna give out more food. We wanna to touch thousands more people. In fact, this year, I'm believing to give out 4 million pounds of food. Would you step out in faith with us? Would you become a partner today? Everything in life to get anywhere really takes partnership. Every one of us are here because of partnership. Life happens because of partnership. I have a dream that we would reach people's physical need to give them a spiritual truth, who Jesus is, who Jesus wants to be in their life, that love that we so boldly profess as Christians. Would you pray today about your gift, whatever size, large or small, that you're gonna partner with us once a month to see God do something incredible in a city. You can sign up for Fearless Partners today. Why wait another day? Let's be generous like our God and watch that generous God while we bless others continue to fill our, our vats, our barns, our, our dream, our business, our family fuller than we ever could have ourselves. God bless you as you give today. Let me pray over your giving as I believe people are moved today to become generous and partner with the Fearless Partners. Jesus, we pray over this giving. We pray over these people that are gonna sow into this ministry. We, we say right now, God, Lord, as we lend to the poor, as we help those in need, Lord, that you would help those that are giving. In Jesus' name, amen.